full circle conversations. All right, guys, welcome to another podcast, Full Circle Conversations. Today we have an amazing guest, and I say amazing because she's a woman entrepreneur, and any woman that's doing what Kim is doing is very admirable. So, Kim, thank you so much for being on the podcast. Welcome. Thank you, Andreas. Okay, so start this off. <laughs> Why are we here right now? I mean, I'm sure the people behind us can see the view, but how did you get to Medellin? Let's start there. Yeah, I was attracted because of the drugs. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that's why most people come, to be honest. Um, it's, it, there's it's a lot the of other drugs. things besides that. Besides the drugs, um, a mastermind brought me here. I didn't know about this piece of... It's, we're in a bowl. Um, but I paid $40,000 for an automation mastermind. And their meeting was here. They're like, let's go White River rafting. Okay. And... Flew in, saw the city, saw the nightlife, saw the people, and I said, wow, this is a place I would visit again. So um, earlier this year, I went back, and uh, now here we are again. But um, yeah, I really like Medellin. That's amazing. And how long ago was that mastermind? A year and a half ago. Okay. A year and a half ago. So a year and a half ago, so yeah. we're talking probably late 22 late 2022 yes, 2022 okay, okay amazing mm -hmm. and it's what's interesting is that now you're hosting masterminds here and you're having people fly in yeah i've been hosting masterminds for three years now because i just the minute i start coaching i'm like i want in-person community i want people to show up here and um yeah we just hosted one a month ago amazing literally one month yeah <laughs> We were yeah. just, it's, it's interesting because you and I met through a mastermind yeah. that our mutual friend Thomas yeah. puts on and there's fantastic people in there Yeah. and I love masterminds. You and I have been both part of masterminds, but just mm -hmm. so the people can hear, right? Because the people listening to this channel, real estate investors, they are into coaching, they're into self-improvement, but I've spent hundreds of thousands of dollars too on masterminds, you yeah. know, just being around the right people in that room it gives you something but you were telling me how much have you personally spent on masterminds yeah three hundred and fifty thousand dollars on masterminds on oh. my own learning and i feel like i should be spending over a million just on my own learning but every time i invest i always get an roi always yeah so there's a theme here i came here because of a mastermind um we met because of a mastermind i create my own masterminds and it's like uh, in person hits different than yeah. Zoom room. Absolutely. So yeah. you've been to so many masterminds. I'm sure mm -hmm. you're going to continue to go more. That's only mm -hmm. going to grow. Yeah. And I agree with you. Every time you go to a mastermind, even if you just get one thing, like, mm -hmm. you know, as a business owner, that one thing can create, you get your money back plus 5X, whatever it may be, right? Yeah. But what are the top three things, if you had to boil it down, I'm sure there's, there's a lot more, mm -hmm. but what have you learned mastermind in your masterminds? Yeah, so what I learned was that um, you, in the isolation of your own mind, when you're sitting and you have your own thoughts, you don't know what it really takes to get to somewhere. You don't understand the real um, grit and velocity of how people think. So inside of ma a mastermind, what benefits me most is to witness how people think and how the leader thinks through the organization because you think that you're putting in a 10 out of 10 effort and then you look at what they're doing and it's like really what you're doing is two out of 10 right. and you don't know all these other things around the two out of 10 that you're doing wrong. So it, what masterminds do for me is it collapses time. It shortcuts time by years. Absolutely. So I want to buy back my time. That's the way to buy them back. Yeah. Cause that's the yeah. one thing you can't ever get back. I mean, yeah. you can, you can get your money back. Mm hmm I mean, the way I see it is you work five, six, seven, ten years, and then that 11th year, you get a massive score. But all that time that it took you to get there was necessary to get there. Mm -hmm. You had to invest the time properly. Mm -hmm. So I love that. I agree in that as far as masterminds. Like one connection, one thing can just completely change your business. Yeah. So where are you originally from, right? Where did you grow up? Give me that, that background story real quick so people can, can understand your journey and we're going to talk and progress more into mindset and your businesses and what you're doing. Yeah. So um, I came from 
what we call jungle Asian, which is Vietnam. There's the there's the princess Asian, which is like Japan, you know, all nice. Right. And then there's people in the jungle, which is where I'm from. And um, Vietnam, is, I was born there, and then I went to America when I was four. So if you arrive to America at age seven and beyond, right, you will still keep a very thick accent. So I was lucky to come to America early. Right. Um, and, and your parents yeah. just wanted a a new opportunity. They saw my the parents were in the Vietnam War, and my dad was in prison for nine years. Wow. After he was imprisoned and released. He couldn't live there because he fought against the side that won communism. Mm, won. Okay. So um, the Amer Americans gave him a ticket to fly his whole family over. So we were very lucky, or I, I'm lucky. My dad went through war and he was in prison for nine years. But um, because of that, I was able to escape the the poverty environment they were in to go to America. That's that's quite a story. I mean, just to spend nine years mm -hmm. fighting for your country. I mean, mm -hmm. that takes a lot of mental strength, you know, to to live that out. So where'd you guys land? And you were telling me what state? Yeah, we oh, yeah. Uh, in Santa Ana in California. Santa Ana, okay, California. Okay. Yeah. We landed there and they never left. And my parents are still over there. That's awesome. Yeah. So how were you growing up? Like, were mm -hmm. you always uh, good grades in school? Were you... Uh, did you always know you wanted to be an entrepreneur? How how did you get started? Like you know, through middle school, high school. Yeah, I've um, I was bullied from kindergarten all the way to sixth grade. Um, I remember growing up, my parents didn't know English. They didn't know how to be a parent because they had us after you know they were traumatized by the war. So I remember waking up to my dad screaming, um, wow. you know, nightmares. Right and um extreme ptsd and they didn't know english so i had to translate for them but i would remember going to school with like like my whole body dirty because they didn't know they they didn't have the time to like bathe us or wow, anything okay. so um so that's why you were bullied yeah uh, most likely i probably smelled yeah. and i probably looked really ragged and because <laughs> 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 you know our clothes were really old we we're super poor we came to america with barely any money yeah and so when even when i was young i was like the world is very different um right. and it's gonna be different for a long time so i felt very different um but even when i was small there's um when when teachers say something and the whole class doesn't know what the teacher was saying i understood um so to me um i did get really good grades uh like straight a's but i was in detention from uh kindergarten to sixth grade nonstop. wow with d's and f's for a very long time until for what reason because i uh grew up really like you know being bullied um the neighborhood i was in was very poor so my friends didn't do their homework i didn't do either who cares about homework you know um and then one day uh, my sixth grade teacher mr mariani i remember very clearly he kim i'm gonna put you in all honors when you leave this school into the next grade because he gets the chance to recommend you know and i'm like mr mariani i am straight d's and f's what are you talking about and then he's like He's like, no, that's not where you belong. And he put me in classes, all honors, in middle school, which is a whole different school. And um, because my environment completely changed and all the friends around me cared about grades, I'm like, oh, and then I got straight A's. So so you, you <laughs> saw like, hey, I'll be rewarded with this, right? Mm -hmm. It's kind of like, almost like what we were going over the weekend, right? Like validation from those around you. Yeah, yeah. It was also, I found that my environment greatly affects me. So yeah. that's why I really don't go out a lot. If I go out, it's with a group of curated people uh, there for the right reasons. And if, um, and I want to surround myself with really amazing people. So I'm an introvert extrovert. Yeah. Okay, that's awesome. Yeah. So you went through school, you got good grades. So when did you get started in entrepreneurship, right? Because mm -hmm. you're in a couple of different things, but what was that first thing that said, hey, you know what? 
I want to go down this path. Yeah. So while in high school, um, my friend, he was listing these car parts on eBay. Um, and I was like, what is this? And then he told me that there are these wrecking yards that exist that, um, that they employ you to do that. And I was like, wow. And, and then I said, wait, could, could we own one? And then right. he was like, I think so. And so that was my first conversation. Like in high school, I saw he was listing parts on eBay and I'm like, okay, interesting. Right. And then I, I went to college and all throughout college, I started listing random parts on eBay. I would go to a shoe store and they would throw away shoes in the dumpster. And I would convince my friend with a car to drive me to the shoe dumpster yeah. with all the shoes. And it was a clean dumpster because it's in the back of a shoe store, not like right. a dirty dumpster. Right, right. And I would go in and like take all the shoes. And I talked to the store manager and I would say, hey, instead of dumping in the dumpster, can I get the shoes from you? I will collect them. And then right. they're like, okay. And so that's my journey. Um, I was in the dorms and I just, from, from the ceiling to, from the floor to the ceiling, just shoes, shoes just shoes. And they was, these were hooker shoes. They were like exotic shoes oh, too. Wow. <laughs> and- uh, Those are expensive. Yeah. Well, I could list them more on eBay. And, right. and then while my friends went to the class and school, I just was driving around getting random stuff from other people's stores that they were throwing out. And, um, and when I graduated, I knew that I couldn't work like a regular person because I, I valued being free a lot. And that's also stems from my parents being <laughs> So when I got to college, I felt like I could breathe, you know, I could be right. my own life. What did you study in college? What were you studying? I, I had to study medical you know pre-med yeah because my parents want me to become a doctor yeah yeah like every asian parent out there yeah i feel like the asian culture mm -hmm. really values an education mm -hmm. a degree and you know a title right yeah they value saying that their daughter is something to their friend you know right right, right. that's like very valued that's yeah. amazing and yeah i, mean, I don't it, think it's amazing i mean it, i think it's it, sad it's, a, <laughs> it's amazing in the sense that they really um, are disciplined mm. as far as like, I'll do anything like for my daughter or son to have this oh, opportunity, yeah. you know? Yeah. I think that's what's amazing. Like, like yes. they really like will sacrifice like anything for that, you know yeah, what I mean? Like and then for them, that's like the... Uh, <laughs> and sometimes they don't understand how much more successful you can be yeah. than that, but like... They just don't yeah. know what they don't know. Yeah. You know? How are they now? The, you know, you know, with all your success and all mm -hmm. that, you know, I'm sure are they proud or like, hey, I wish you would have stuck in medical school school. What, what do they tell well, you? Well, I, I make a lot more than the doctor friends <laughs> and um, I have way more freedom. Um, but that, you know, everyone's happiness is very different from each other. So to me, it's not like like I ended up better. I ended up having a life that I want. So my parents. They stop controlling me. They see that I'm happy. They see that right. I'm healthy. Right. They're just like, this is what's best for you. This is the path that you wanted to take and we support it. But it yeah. took years for them to accept it. But after they saw me with my money and my yeah. freedom and my time and less stress, and um, they were like, this is good. <laughs> they were no longer against it. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, I feel like finally, you know, them accepting you it's kind of like again like we were talking about just that validation i'm sure that must have been like you know a proud moment for you too mm -hmm. but let's talk about your path then okay mm -hmm. because let's talk with the first business right yeah because you have a wrecking yard yeah so explain to me you know that vision that you had from when you were in high school yeah to how you actually created that and yeah you, and that's been going on you told me for eight years right yeah. so that's yeah. not easy because most businesses yeah. will go out a business two, three, four, maybe five years, but yeah. you've been at it eight years. Yeah. So tell me, how did you get started and how have you been successful throughout these eight years? Yeah, so it wasn't like after I graduated, I like started a wrecking yard right away. Right. Um, I was like, I was in a relationship with a partner in college and- um, He was that, your business partner? No, Okay. it's just a relationship. It's just, okay. But it knocked me out like, um, it was my first love and yeah. I was like, uh, oh, 
and I got cheated on. <laughs> he cheated on me, and it felt like the wind was knocked out of my sails. Just and yeah. I couldn't breathe. I couldn't move. I was in this depression for a long time. I would say for over a year. Um, and I just didn't know what would I do or if I would even be employable or if I would even want to, um, you know, go to work. Um, so after college, I spent quite a bit of time just really, I moved back with my parents and I was just in this depressed state. And um, when I started looking for a job, I graduated UCLA. So it was a very good school. It's a top 10 school. Oh, absolutely. And um, I'm like, what should I do now? And then I remember my friend from high school where he was. And I remember my college days of like selling all these parts on eBay. And um, I, I hit him up and I'm like, hey, um, you remember that? You remember what you were doing back? And I'm like, do you want to come in with me on a business idea? Let's start our own. And then he's like, okay, I know all about the business because I worked in it. So I can show you like how it works. Yeah, and, I yeah, said, yeah. and I know I've been listing on eBay and listing on Amazon's for years. I can show you how that works. And so we combined our two skills. Um, and at the time I moved back home and um, I was like, let's do it. Let's just buy a car. And so we bought a car. We put the car, in, so my dad's house had a garage in the front. Right. We parted the car out on his yard. It's Hui and me. And he's then, Asian as well? Yeah, he's okay, Asian. Okay. And all of a sudden I heard like the cops, uh, the sound of the cops and seven, I would say more than seven, but seven cop SWAT people yeah. came out with guns because they thought something super illegal was happening. And our neighborhood was like, a lot of people were like, Hey, what's going on? Right, They're parting right. out all this thing in the front yard. So um, I just heard like them going, get out on the ground. And, <laughs> and I, I'm like, what's going on? And, and I said, no, I own this car. I own this car. And then um, it's a ridiculous story because I don't know why would that happen in our neighborhood. But yeah, it did. And what were you guys doing with the car, though? We were just parting it out. There were okay. parts all over the place. You were place. taking the parts off. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. So okay. maybe they felt like it was an illegal activity. Right. And um, we took the cars apart. I started listing the parts online. And then it started selling and selling and selling. And then I'm like, wow, within one day, we paid for the entire car with more parts. And I said, okay, this is feasible. So, yeah. so after we parted two cars, um, we filled up a U-Haul up with all the car parts. And then we moved north into the desert. I was able to have him uh, go from warehouse to warehouse inside of this city called Hesperia. And back then, Hesperia is like a, a dead city, like very few people there, tons of warehouses. So we got a lease and it was an empty warehouse. If you go to like my Instagram, Kim Possible Dang, you'll see, you scroll down, you'll see pictures of warehouses. Um, but yeah, we told me he's like kim you're like uh you don't know anything about baking but you want to start a bakery it's kind of like yeah, that yeah 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 because i knew nothing about car parts or cars yeah and that's the beginning of it and we start start parting out car after car and then i bought him out because i saw that he um he wanted different things for the business and right. i didn't want to um uh, check in with another person in that business so i'm like all right let me buy you how how much is it and yeah. he gave me a number and i said okay here's the money and i bought him out nice yeah that's amazing so you went from not knowing anything mm -hmm. to partnering i think that's there's a key lesson right there right yes like partner up find with someone. resources find you know partnerships aren't always easy but if you find the right partner mm -hmm. and i feel like people think uh, in the present moment which is great but things don't always last forever like we yeah. we all leave this earth unfortunately you know we're only here for a specific amount of time yeah so the people that are in your life now five ten years from now they might not be there but you know you can both benefit from each other uh, at the present moment yeah so i think that's amazing so you buy them out and yeah. then what year was that like um there's like like 2000 and 
14 was when okay. I bought him out. Okay. And then you continued yeah. to continue the business. So, and, yeah. and, and how, how's that business now? Like you're, you've stabilized it. Mm -hmm. It, you know, basically runs on its own. You have your, your team on the ground and. Yeah, it's, it's fairly small. I'm not going to say it's a huge operation. I did grow it into a bigger operation. Right. We had two warehouses at some point, And then all of a sudden, marijuana got um, legalized. Oh, yeah. And then all of a sudden, the warehouses around me became grow houses. Oh, okay. Because they were, they were bringing in the big bucks. You right, know, they right, were right. bringing in the money. And um, they could pay more for the lease. And yeah, all that. For, the, for the warehouse. They yeah, could pay the five warehouse. times yeah. the rent. So for me, luckily, he didn't evict me. He right. was just like, Kim, I can't have you have two, but you can have one. And I said, okay. And so he kicked me out of the other one, which I lost. The other warehouse was packed of right. car parts. So I had to liquidate like hundreds and thousands of dollars wow. of car parts um, in three months. He's like, you're out in three months from that one, but you can keep this one. And I said, okay. Um, it still operates to, to this day. It's a very small operation. There's a person taking apart cars, buying the cars, because you can buy and the cars will be shipped to you. A person in India listing all the parts and editing all the photos and a person taking pictures. So it's a very tiny operation. Right. And it's, it's still making money till this day. I've automated it so I could have more freedom doing other things. Absolutely. So yeah. nowadays there's no excuse <laughs> to not be able to have a business. Yeah. Right. It's just you got to put in the time. You have to find the knowledge and then you have to have the infrastructure. I mean, at the end of the day, that's, that's really all it is. So that's amazing. Krim, congrats on that, on that first business. Thanks. So now let's, now let's talk about what your passion is because i could tell you're passionate about this right mm -hmm. coming to medellin and having these masterminds and bringing your community together and the people together right you have a passion mm -hmm. for it yeah and you love this so talk to me what you do now as far as your coaching and creating and building communities yeah so that's my passion um after i've automated the dismantling business where we just buy cars part them out list them online um I'm like, what's the opposite of this business? Because this business is hard. You know, it's an e-com business, physical parts, oils. You have to deal with tons of, you have to deal with physical people. Right. Incredible. And it was in the desert. So super hot, super cold weather. And the people around me, they were on drugs. So <laughs> it's the desert. So yeah, a lot right, of people right. were like tweaking. It's um, California. Yeah, and it's <laughs> California. <laughs> so um, after that, I said the opposite end of software. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to make an app. Well, the app idea failed. Um, but then after that, I'm like, what's the simplest way I can get into software? Oh, a little, maybe a little tiny Chrome extension. I started, um, uh, I created a Facebook group because my friend, she's like, Kim, you can do affiliate marketing because affiliate marketing is, no product, everything online, exactly what you're looking for. And I said, okay. So I created a Facebook group because that's what the affiliate marketers told me to do. Right. But when I created the Facebook group, I was copying and pasting the questions and answers when you enter a group. And I was like, okay, this is a lot of manual labor. So I went on Upwork. I typed in how to create a Chrome extension uh, or how to make a tool that can copy and paste this information for me um and then the answer was all these people who create chrome extensions responded and they're like well i can create you that tool super quick and i got one made for 380 dollars, and i listed it on i was like okay how do i sell this i read russell brunson's dot com secrets um because he had this funnel i'm like okay i will make a funnel right, and right. it took me no joke two days to figure out how to even like put together one funnel is and that a lot or a little it's a lot for me because okay. it's like it's because when i spend time making something i don't do anything else until it's done so right. i click you know make and then i like drag stuff together and then i would i would go eat i come back i'm still on it and that means two days is a very very long time to spend on like one thing right at least to me. Um, now I can create a funnel in like a minute. So two days versus a minute. It's, it's very different. Um, but yeah, I, I launched it to 25 people on an email list. That's not even warm. 
two people paid me seven dollars a month that's when i saw my life change because i said wow i went from selling all these car parts to selling air air for seven dollars a month yeah yeah like i am not Those shifting anything dollars yeah changed your the way you view things yes because i'm like if i can get two i can get three if i can get three i can get four if i can get four i can get a hundred a hundred i get a thousand a thousand two thousand so that's what ended up happening and throughout the way and anyone can tell you this if you're pitching a software tool for seven bucks a month you're not rolling in the dough you're not going to be making much money right, right? Um, and if, especially if you're not good at marketing, you suck, you're, right. you're not going to make any money. So I said, okay, um, what is another thing that can be tied to this? And that's when I saw that all my subscribers are like, Kim, Kim, help us show us this. Uh, how do you monetize from the group? Cause the first Chrome extension was to create emails from group, collect emails from gotcha. groups. The next step is to make money from the groups. So you created first the tool mm -hmm. for the group before mm -hmm. you had the group. Before I have the coaching program, before right. I had the real community. Right, right. Yeah. So you sold the tool, but then they wanted that community, right? Yeah. Okay. And I said, well, I don't know how to monetize the community. You know, I, I got, I made $14 and I put together a $7 course that became a $997 course that became a $5,000 course on how do you make passive income with your own little tool. Like right. exactly what I did. So right. I'm like, I'll, I'll show you what I did. Right. So that course sold over 300 copies. Nice. So that's when I, um, I went, I actually saw real money come in. And, um, and then that's when I started investing in myself. I'm like, okay, who here has the answers? What is this next level? And I started investing into how, learning how to um, automate, how to put things together. But then figuring out how to have the community and monetizing from it came as a, as a result of me helping people make passive income online. Because um, owning a little tool that costs you like $300 one time and then turning it around and charging $10, $20. Some of my students were making, no joke, $60,000 a month reoccurring revenue from what I showed them on their little Chrome extension right. because they have a community. You so know? they created their, their own Chrome mm -hmm. extension. Yes. Right? Okay. Yeah. So you taught them how to build a community mm -hmm. and help them create their own Chrome extension. Yeah. Okay. So you built a software Chrome extension without knowing anything and then you taught others how to do it. Yes. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. You're very resourceful, you know, because your first business, you had no experience in that. Yeah. You didn't know anything none. about that. You found the right person mm -hmm. to help you. Mm -hmm. Then you bought that person out and that's still operating. Mm -hmm. And then on this second uh, business with the uh, Chrome extensions, you knew nothing about it. Yeah. And you found someone to build it for you. So is that, have you always have had that, like that resourcefulness to go out and find the answer? Or yeah. did you pick that up? Um, I've always had it. I, I, even in college when I was, go, like I didn't have a car. So I would convince friends to drive me to uh, places. When I say friends, I mean ex-boyfriends. Because <laughs> those are the only people who would help you. Just kidding. <laughs> I'm like, please. Um, but yeah, uh, I've always had that, even when I was young. And, um, but you know what? My friend, my mom growing up, she, was, she told me everyone's like me. Right. Um, so when I brought home trophies, I brought home awards. I I was like valid. I wasn't valedictorian. I was salutatorian, like second of my whole school. She was like, "Well, you know, everyone's like that. Look how many schools there are." And I was right. like, "You're right. There are people." So I grew up thinking everyone is like me. So when I do things, I'm just like, "How can you don't see what I see? How right. aren't you not as resourceful as me? How aren't you like I get confused that right. people are not exactly like me?" But growing now, I have accepted that not everyone is exactly like me. That's shocking. But, um, but so when you ask me that question, when you're like, have you always had it? Um, I thought I had nothing. <laughs> so I thought, I'm like, what are, you what are you talking about? I would say everyone has it, whatever it is, you know. Have you always been resourceful? Yeah, of course. Everyone's like that, right? What? But yeah, I don't know.
I still, my yeah. mind still thinks. Yeah, there's no, there's no reason. All the answers are already out there. Yeah. The people already have the expertise. You learn marketing from Russell Brunson. Mm -hmm. You learn the business from your other business partner. Yeah. The software from someone on Upwork. So it's amazing. Yeah. So that's the software business. And how many of those Chrome extensions then have you created since then? So far, I tell people I have a portfolio of Chrome extensions. I have like nine. Um, one isn't a Chrome extension. So I technically have 11 software. Okay. One is and that's um, all from scratch. An AI. That's all from like you finding a need in the marketplace and fulfilling that need. Um, well, all of them except two. Two is white label. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you have eight, nine that you've created from from scratch. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And what is so? It's not that complicated then, right? It's just yeah. you have to have the the vision. Yeah. And then have the people do it for you, right? I I I, I want to bring that up because people watching. You know, sometimes it's hard when you don't know or like when you don't put in the effort or when you just follow a pattern. But you broke out of the pattern two times, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. On, the, on the wrecking yard and then on the software business. So mm -hmm. what do you do now with coaching then? What do you mm -hmm. teach other people as far as building a community? Can you explain to me that? Yeah, so when I started doing live events and I was surrounded by a bunch of software people, these people were like super techie, nerdy engineers that just wants to do something on the side. And I'm like, I look around, I'm like, I'm surrounded by nerds, you know, <laughs> I'm like, I'm surrounded by geeks. Is this the life of, is this the live events I want, you know? Right. And they're like super, super nerdy. And I'm like, no, this is not it. So I, I said, okay, if I were to create my own community, who do I want to surround myself with? That was by? the mastermind you were going to, right? That was the mastermind I created. So okay. I started live events for people who wanted to create passive income gotcha. from their own Chrome extension. Gotcha. I have a freaking Chrome extension mastermind. It's hilarious. That's amazing. Um, yeah. One of my events, uh, uh, one of my attendees is like, Kim, do you know that you're creating a whole event for a Chrome plugin? And I'm like, I know. <laughs> 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 but uh, yeah, but after that, after I realized the type of environment I want, I want to be surrounded by people who want to change the world. And that's when I tapped into coaches. Right. Um, because then I get to be surrounded by amazing people who want to like break out and do their own thing and change the world. Not like make passive income on the side, which is cool too. That's totally cool. Not, yeah. not um, you know, you that anything bad world. about that. Yeah. yeah. But um, with that said, that's why I got into coaching people how to scale their communities because I already know how they can make passive income. I, and when I was m doing that, I was creating my own paid community. So I learned how to make my own paid community. And I hired this coach, Alex Moscow, one of my coaches. I paid him over $50,000 so far. He helped me uh, speak one to many to a live audience in person because his program was all about live events. And so... I'm like, okay, I know the skill of creating passive income. I know the skill of uh, converting one to many. What if I can combine this? So that's when I tried to figure out communities. And then it turns out my Chrome extension that's letting people grab emails from groups. I'm tapped into thousands of communities who owe me a favor, you know, because they use my tool. Right, right. So then I started tapping the shoulders of all these community people. And I said, your group is 20,000 people. Uh, can you give me you some know? examples of the communities that these yeah. folks have created? Yeah. Like, uh... So, so uh, okay. So one of my uh, subscribers, he has a gangster community. It's called Gangster Quotes. Gangster quotes. So okay. he so gets these are Facebook communities. For Facebook the most part. communities. Yeah. So he gets 10,000 new people joining his gangster community to be part of the gangster life for fun. Um, that would be one community that he utilizes my tool. His name is Dano. And he's like, how do I monetize this, Kim? And I showed him how to do it. Now he teaches others how to go and uh, blow up their restaurants because his gangster cult enabled him when he was like looking at that community, a lot of the people in there, the people he was speaking to have restaurants. Okay. And he helped them like... Uh, Understand the gangster life. Not really. He's not a gangster. Right. But then he parlayed that into a coaching business on helping restaurants 
blow up their business locally. So that's my first like parlay into that. Right. And then I'm like, oh, what about local businesses? So there's this girl named Shelly. She has a group around flexible, flexible education. And、um, she charged $60 an hour for her time in person. She would do a personal session with you. And we, I was like, okay, Shelly.、Um, Cause she came to me and she's like, well, Kim, how do I monetize this? And I said, let's put together a coaching program. So we put together a $4,500 coaching program. She sold that to her community. She scaled to $90,000 a month、nice. on that offer. And she's like, everything's virtual now. And I'm like, yeah, you don't even need to trade your time for money. And so that snowballed into like, Another、uh, dating coach, Kim Seltzer. Okay. Her group was only 400 people, very small. And、um, I was like, okay, Kim, what do you do? What do you teach? What are you a coach of? She's like, I coach pe- women how to date online. And I oh, said,、wow. oh, okay. And I said, how much is it? She's like, $6,000. I'm like, okay. And、um, I, I told her what to say. She went and she pitched one to many into her group, 400 people. And she enrolled 12 ladies in at $6,000. So she did nearly $80,000 on、uh, five days of conversation to her group. So she's like, wow, this really works. So I took what worked. I identified what are the words that work to convert one to many because I had prior coaching on in person events. I took that and I put that into a virtual way. And then I tied my group, all the group knowledge that I have. And I'm like, all you group owners, <laughs> if you want to make money and you're a coach or you're a service provider or you have a physical business somewhere, this is what you got to say to a group, one to many. And、um, this is how you fill up your group. This is what you got to say. You go say it and then you get clients.、And、you have an offer. Yeah. You, you, you help them come up with an offer as well. Yes. Fill up the group, come up with an offer. Pitch the offer, and then how do they deliver the offer without burnout? Which in the coaching space, it's just, you know, it's just group coaching. Right. So you、That's、don't need to. That's the answer right there. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need to、um, burn yourself out. You、right. show up twice a week, group coaching, you coach, and that's your delivery. That's amazing. And then、yeah. are they adding software to it? So some of them are adding software to it as well, like with the extensions and things like that? Yeah, that's the, that's the differentiator with my、um, with package、okay. versus anyone else out there. Anyone else could be like, hey, I'll teach you how to be a coach and, and scale your coaching business. For me, I'm like, that's nice, but what about all the reoccurring revenue, the passive income you would get? And so this is what I, instead of teaching engineers, Who part time want to make some passive income from a little Chrome extension? I was teaching these coaches, these like world changers, how to identify in their ecosystem what tools their people are already using to make their own version and then launch that version into the community. Into so the community. I was showing coaches how to become software CEOs after they became successful coaches. So, it made my offer incredibly different than anything else out, out there. It stands out a lot. Yeah. Because it, it stands the test of time.、Uh, if all you're selling is high ticket coaching and you don't sell high ticket coaching the next month, you don't have money, right? right? But if you sell high ticket coaching, you get that cash. You know, five clients like Sharon Cecilia, they teach energy healing. Energy healing, like energy spiritual, healing, spiritual okay, energy okay. healing for $5,555.、Uh, they like that number. And、um, I told them what to say into the group. They said it. They did $49,000. That's a cash grab, right? right? They got that cash. And I'm like, okay, what app are they using to energy heal? What are they doing? And then we go on and we white label one of the apps that the,、mm. their people are already using.、Okay. I'm like, instead of just sending people off onto all these、to、other things, all those apps,、yeah. own it. And no one would think to own these solutions, they would never in a million years think that. Um, and so, for me, what I encourage is the things you don't know, you don't know, you should at least give it a try. At least spend like five minutes, ten minutes, and just like experience it. So, yeah, so it creates this good ecosystem. You have, you have the cash flow, the cash flow goes into passive income. Similar to what, you know,、um, your world is all about, which is the cash that you make, you put it into real estate properties. 100%. For passive income. 
And if they don't do that, then all they're doing is they're just making money and spending it. You know, they're not really leveraging their money. Absolutely. You have to invest. I mean, your active income should turn into passive income at some point in your journey. Mm -hmm. That way you don't have to keep going and going and going. And real estate is the ultimate play. Software is the ultimate play. I love that, Kim. I mean, you just dropped a lot of knowledge right there. Amazing. <laughs> so how is it being a woman and an entrepreneur, right? Because you're, you're extremely successful. You know, we we're talking about how much money you're making uh, per month. I don't know if you want to share that or not, but I don't think that's relevant. You know, people could kind of guess, right? But how is that journey like as a woman, right? Because I'm sure with a lot of these masterminds, I mean, I mean, I'm just saying the truth. Most of the women I see there are with their, you know, their spouse or their partner or their boyfriend or their husband, right? But here you are, you know, top a big dog, you know what I mean? In 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 a space where it's mainly dominated by males. So mm -hmm. talk to me what that's like from women's point of view. Yeah, because I started my business off in the wrecking yard business where literally every single wrecking yard owner is an old white male. I've been to wrecking yard conferences, which is not so fun, but <laughs> it's, it, they exist. Um, and I remember being surrounded by 50 something year old men when I was in my early 20s. I was like, I was like a little kid and right. they were like, Let's go clubbing, like to entertain, you know, to, to just entertain you to talk to me, oh, okay. you know, <laughs> Hey, what do you want to do after this? We can go hit the clubs. And I was like, <laughs> Nope, not with you guys, you know? <laughs> so I'm used to being in a very male dominated environment for forever. Right. So to me in the coaching space with these masterminds, it doesn't feel any different. So I'm like, yeah, everyone's a dude. Right. Um, but yeah, when I speak to females, I encounter the same thing as you. They are, they are someone's girlfriend, right. you know? But here's the thing. I also know that female masterminds exist. Right. You know, you're, you're just not in them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. They're strictly but females. They exist. Yeah. yeah. So I, I feel very at home, but I do feel the pressure, the bro pressure, like right. trying to be the top bro. And I even told my friend one day, I was like, I just want to be one of the bros. And then she stopped me. She's like, what are you saying, Kim? I'm like, never mind. That was stupid. Never mind. You know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So do you have more female friends or male friends at this point? You know, with everything you got going on? I think it's uh, mostly men. But I also like Christine Steele. She's one of my close friends. And she she's a mom. She lives in Kansas on a, you know, 80-acre farm. Wow. Uh, she... She makes close to $100,000 a month with one VA. Uh, and she makes affiliate income through Go High Level. And she's just chilling. But um, she's the type of friend that's like, hey, Kim, hey Kim let's go to Florida Keys. Right. Okay. And then I hop on a plane and I'm there and I hang out with her. Um, it's like a friend where she can have... I almost hesitate this, but like she can create she can go where you want to go to create the crazy experiences you want to create and those are the type of female friends that um i really value because right because she's not going to be like oh kim uh, i can't do that or she'll make it happen even if she has a family and all of that so um i have a few real close friends i would say really like four female okay. friends um no or, close or in in close total. friends yeah four in total okay. um and then like acquaintances are hundreds you know right. and most of them are male yeah 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 it's interesting because uh i don't know if you know who chris root is but a real estate investor and i, I like the way he describes it he doesn't really call people friends mm -hmm. but he calls them allies Ooh, yeah so allies. he doesn't use the word friend so he's like hey i have i have these allies you know, that I know because uh, an ally is going to be there for you, right? And you're going to yeah. be there for an ally. Yeah. So that's amazing. So your female friends, are they, do they have the same mindset as you? Because I know you said you're very selective on, mm -hmm. you know, when you go out, the people you choose to spend time with, but do they have that same mindset as you? Or, yeah. Yeah. They do. Some of my female friends are actually my team members and they think the way I think. They believe in energy. They believe in seeing things when others don't see it and um they believe the the power that you have the 
chemicals that you have, the aura that you have, it like exists and it like emanates out and it's real. So I, um, they're very similar minded. And something that I, I believe in very powerfully now is you are the energy you attract, not just team members, but like everyone. So I don't really separate. Right. It's just them. Life. Yeah. It's just full circle. You yeah. Know? It's like that's who you are. We show up either at work, personal life, on vacation, um, in the office, with family, with friends. It's, it's who you are yeah so now what advice would you have to women right because for me you come off as someone very noble like mm -hmm. you're not you know saying hey you know i'm better than a guy or you know you you, you don't come off that way you know what mm -hmm. i mean so what advice do you have to women to show up like you do right with that mindset with this mm -hmm. kind of success you know because some women, like you said, you know, they may be intimidated or, or they don't know where to go or they may just be like, hey, look, you know, this is a male's dominated game. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't it isn't like I'm 100 percent immune from those thoughts. Those right. thoughts still exist. But the thing I think which I one, get, which thoughts exist, which is like um, I wouldn't say intimidation, but I would say comparison. OK, I think that just happens naturally as a human thing. However, the way to think about it, I remember my roommate one time, he's like, Kim, have you heard of Dr. D. Martini? And he, I was like, what? And he's like, have you heard of the one in the many and the many in the one? And I'm like, what does that mean? And he's like, you think that the relationship you have with a person, let's say, is so special, um, the bond that you have with them, but that feeling that you have exists in this relationship, in this friendship, in your moms, in their parents. So like the characteristics of the thing that you find so special is actually lives in, it still lives in your circle, in your life. So even if you say, even if you aren't as close with a person, it still lives in the many. So that's not completely related to what you're saying, but how it ties into like how you can think through things is being intimidated or thinking someone's big or small or, uh, or better than or less than is just you putting something on a pedestal right it's your own mind more than it is more than it's the real truth more, more than what the other person is even thinking right, you know the right, other person right. isn't even thinking about that so it's uh it's a construct in your own mind to fill this gap you know um a a oh this person is right here i am right here here uh and it's a mental construct just like how you think that you will die if if this person's out of your life right. but really the the feelings of friendship of love of, of belonging of care that feeling exists in other places in your circle already and so you aren't losing something just like um just like looking at another person on a pedestal isn't like a, a something more or something less um you know so that's the way i think about it it's our perception is not reality right it's so hard sometimes because yeah. you're just like this is what my mind sees but that's just yeah. like what you're perceiving and it's not reality mm -hmm. so that's how i that's how i deal with it yeah <laughs> i'm like oh that's not the truth like i catch myself a lot right yeah you have you have respect for everybody around you right because mm -hmm. there's some there's some women that do it just so they could prove they're they're better than men, you know, and I don't I don't get that feeling from you. You know, you're on your own path, you're on your own journey and you're empowered by your, you know, your own self. Oh, yeah. Like they have something to prove. Yeah, exactly. Some someone like did them wrong. Right. Maybe. Or, yeah. or they're like, I don't need a man or I'm better than men or, you know, things like that. Oh, no, you know, that, that's definitely not. Yeah. I don't feel that. At all. I think um, life is a combination of. uh like your growth right. depends on interaction. So the type of relationships you get into that are the most intimate are going to be a lot of times with the opposite sex. Right. And if your if that's where your growth is, if that's where you grow, because only in the closest, most intimate relationship are you going to be triggered. Like you're going to feel some triggers popping up because you're right. so comfortable then you get triggered because you're more vulnerable you're closer and then your body is going help you know like run away you know it's saying all these things because of 
whatever happened in your childhood, the way you were raised. So it's in that environment that uh, that allows you to grow. So if the environment allows me to grow and that's when I get triggered for me to see if I grow or I didn't grow, if I respond in a way that makes sense or if I'm if I like run away from it, then then I don't think it's something that I should be against. So I, I think when people are like men are bad or like I I don't, you know, screw them or something like that. It's like you're kind of hurting yourself. Right. You are stopping yourself from from allowing your body and your mind to be in an environment where you can grow. Right. Yeah. Right. So How much have you it. have you worked on mindset, right? Because over the weekend we were in a workshop. Mhm. Mm over mindset mm -hmm. but how much like what work do you do there yeah so yeah. um i've been working on my mind i would say very recently in the past eight months okay, um, wow. before that i was completely oblivious about what the subconscious and the conscious is about okay life was very um oblivious i remember even looking back on how i did things right um people would get hurt here there air there and I would say, I don't get it. Like I would look around and, and be completely clueless. So um, yeah, that mindset workshop is the first mindset, uh, second mindset workshop I've been to. The first one would, I say Tony Robbins, that's kind of like a mindset workshop. Yeah, absolutely. But it was, it had 5,000 people. It was called Unleash the Power Within. <laughs> <laughs> I call that a mindset workshop. And then um, I told Brett this, I said, I paid a mindset coach a business coach, right. $15,000 a month for a month. mindset coaching, for business coaching. And it turns out he was doing mindset on me mm. without my consent. Because I was like, teach me business. And I'm used to people telling me, okay, you got to do this, you got to do that. This is a strategy, go do it. Um, but for him, he's like, let's, t let's talk about how you were raised. And, and so we talked about my childhood and how I was raised. And I found out that I was making a lot of decisions with my mom on my shoulder. Right. You know, she's the one making the decisions. And I was like, whoa, I became like more aware of that. And um, it was sessions with him um, once a week for four months. And um, I ended up firing a lot of people. I, I broke up with my ex. I like gone through so much transformation um how is that dating you know now you're talking about your yeah. ex like how is that dating because you're in the one percent of the one percent <laughs> you know you make more than 99 percent of guys you yeah, know what i mean i know so, so you know with <laughs> your business with everything yeah. you got going on you're just yeah. high level you know what i mean yeah. like, <laughs> I you're know. not average you know in an average world it's like you know so how is that right to really find somebody like that i mean for a guy it'd be easier because you know, I guess we look for different things, right? Yeah. You know, know. what I mean? But like a, a woman on your level yeah. is going gonna, is gonna to have a lot higher standards, you know? Mm -hmm. for, for a guy that's successful, I mean, uh -huh. you know, it's like two or three things that he really needs, <laughs> you know what I mean? But, uh, yeah, yeah. but how is that, you know, now that you, you touch the subject? Yeah, well, you would think that. Yeah. However, um, so I have a therapist, I had a therapist for six years. Okay. And um, the therapist was like, Kim. You're so smart with your business. You're so smart with this. Why are you not smart with your relationships? So I think that right. a lot of people can relate to that. They, yeah. They're so smart this way, but they're just like, they just don't, they don't apply the same thing as they're <laughs> smart in the business as a relationship. She was like, why don't you apply that? And I said, okay, I'm going to try. And so, <laughs> um, yeah, my dating. So I, I, I have this philosophy of like, relationships are before i became more aware right before you became really conscious and became conscious yeah. became aware became mindful relationships are there to have you stay have you be mentally calm personally mm -hmm. so you can like excel professionally mm, okay. so i um chose relationships and chose partners that did everything i said and was there and okay. loved me but they weren't mentally um stimulating at right. all to, like for you. they're just there yeah okay they're just there and so, so i was in those relationships you wanted to do <laughs> but then yeah. you found out hey i want i don't want you just to do this yeah right? yeah okay. so i found out oh that 
doesn't fit me. Right. And um, yeah, so the type of person for me is going to be very like, I guess to me, my standards have raised right. a lot, which, yeah. which I believe it exists out there. Just like you, yeah. you think the life you created, for example, where you have like, um, you know, a grill that grills like 10 times the speed of a normal grill where you have like, you know, specific um, air fryer and, right. and things like that where you're like, I decided to import this into my life. I think that's the gift of us being uh, an entrepreneur. You know, man or woman, it allows us to live a life in our own honesty. We are, we can craft our own life. So right. although I could say, oh, it might be difficult to find a person who right. fits all these things, um, an insight I would say is a person can check off all your box, right? But what if they bring with you nervous energy? What if they bring with you crazy energy, you know? That person could be amazing, but the energy they give you is you're just like, that's not my cup of tea. So um, the way I see it now is the person doesn't need to check off every single piece of the box. It's not like my standards are ridiculous. But it's I don't need any I don't need anything. And uh, because I have money, I have time, I have whatever. Right. It's now more what is the energy that that person brings? You know? And that person could be like, poor or yeah, rich or whatever. That's what whatever. I was gonna say. That's what yeah. I was gonna say. Like your most important thing is mm -hmm. the energy. Because mm -hmm. you have you're mm -hmm. not in survival mode anymore, yeah. right? I mean, you know, unfortunately, most people live in survival mode with, mm -hmm. you know, with money, with food, with, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. But you just, you're well above that. Now you just want to take care of your energy. Mm. And you know the type of people that I find has really good energy? People that have figured out their life to some extent. Right. Yeah. And so that's what matters to me. People who can curate amazing experiences and have that good energy in their life i think the thing that makes me picky is i realize i can't have a partner that just coasts by right. and just chills out like uh some men here that i've met their yeah. partners don't know a lick of english and they're very nice and they're very kind and they're very pretty um i could have the equivalent of that as a male with a male but that won't uh give me the, the the mental stimulation that that i find valuable um because i did start dating and i saw that a person who is very mentally stimulating can um as a partner can take your life to like not just 2x 3x but like 100x level just like how in what areas yeah in in every area yeah. i i'm not i don't even see them as like like singular fun. in one thing but like in everything in the business in the way they think about their money and the way they think about their their relationships their friendships and the way they think about everything it just bleeds into everything else so right. and usually these high level people um are like they usually have more control of their life and their time so they end up being entrepreneurs they end up being people who have more control of themselves and so that's what i would say is is picky i i think it's the right energy yes the right yeah. energy and the right and it's like one plus one is not two type it's of energy 100. yeah love that yeah that's awesome. Kim. So what are your, some, some of your biggest challenges right now, right? That mm -hmm. you're going through. We talked about your journey, mm -hmm. a lot of amazing things going on. So what, what's something that you're struggling right now that you're looking to overcome right now in life and business? Yeah. Um, well, I was telling Gilberto this, right? Like we're kind of like not stuck, but we're right. at, we're at a certain level in our business where it's not like, um, it's not like we're running unicorn companies, right? It's not right. like we're running 100 people companies or anything <laughs> like that. It's like small group of like 10, 12 people, right? right. So um, to me, what's really interesting is learning about leadership right now. 
when someone's like, what, what is your challenge? I, I would say my intense focus is on leadership because right. I think that is what will, that's what makes the difference between someone that can manage or someone that can lead a 12 person company to a 15, to a 20 person, to a 30, to a 40. And I just want to see if I can get there. And it's like a fun game to play. And if I can't get there, it's okay. I'm not going to die. Um, but it's something that is a big focus right now. So I'm actually hunting down a lot of leadership people and people who can lead slightly bigger companies. You know, people in the six to $10 million a year range right now uh, are people that I'm looking for mentorships for. And I'm just, I'm just jumping on 15 minute calls with them, having conversations with them. That's amazing. That's a yeah. great strategy, you know, to go to the next level. Because I mm -hmm. think lead, anything you do it revolves around people. Mm -hmm. So the way you're setting yourself up is like, how do I lead people better? How do I become a better uh, around people? So that's amazing. So yeah. what do you, where do you see yourself, you know, in the future? What are some of your goals? I, I know you shared some of your goals when we were at the workshop. Yeah. You know, it's stadiums full. But like, what, yeah. what's one goal that if you could fulfill that, it would just be like nirvana for you? um so getting into this so knowing that i can spread ideas and i can spread stories and i can influence communities um what would be amazing for me is a life well lived where where my ideas that has helped me gain clarity and and to be able to see i can pass that on to as many people as possible and the way I've been doing it is in-person events, live events, uh, paid communities where people are more invested in themselves by putting in money. Um, so they show up better, you know. Um, so I would be very happy if I can continue doing that. And um, yeah, besides the m more crazy goal thing, which is um, having live events that would fill up a stadium and having... Um, my uh, tools, which are right now a lot of simple tools, be world-changing tools, you know, that can um, influence a lot more people. So I love that. Yeah. I love that. So we're going to wrap up here, bro. Is there one book that you can recommend to the audience, you know, that maybe had a big impact in your life or one piece of information or what, what, what could you recommend to them? Yeah. Um, well, a book I'm reading right now is called Buy Back Your Time by Dan Martell. It simplifies a lot of like um, a lot of life concepts that that are related to business and SaaS. So I really like it. Buy That's back amazing. your time. Buy back your time. Awesome. So Kim, yeah, thank you so much for being on the podcast. The people watching, where can they follow you? We're gonna drop all the links in the description, but leave everything where people can reach you right now. Yeah. So I always tell everyone to go to one site, and it's Group Convert dot com if you go there you will enter my world enter into my newsletter and learn more about me you'll get you'll get dripped emails by me every day um, <laughs> i'm going there i'm gonna learn <laughs> i'm gonna see what you do <laughs> and um and my handle is kim possible dang and that's everywhere on twitter on facebook on linkedin uh actually linkedin is dang kim dang kim yeah kim thank you so much for being on the podcast i'm inspired you know, your inspiration to women, I really respect you, you know, not, not just because you're a woman, but no matter what gender you are, you build, you know, successful companies, you're making a big impact, mm -hmm. you take risks. And what I really like about you, what I learned about here is that you find other people that align with you to help you reach your goals and your dreams. So thank you so much for coming on. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, Andreas. <laughs>